so when we were talking about like, you know, because here's the thing is I feel like, say you have a, a client, right? And they're going after a big shoe company. We'll say, you know, Uggs, you know, whatever, whatever <laughs> it may be, right? Oh, hey. I uh, would say maybe not. Okay. <laughs> maybe that's not a good look for you or you maybe I'm the I wrong agent. Maybe I can't. <laughs> Let's say I'm trying to go what for Uggs. a good deal. Let's see. <laughs> let's say I'm trying to go. Listen, I wasn't trying to bring other companies. Into oh, the Nine fold, Club you know Uggs. Hey, Uggs. Hey. Nine Club's looking for partners. You maybe little, you're a good fit. A little orange. Hey. Yeah, a little orange fur. I think it'd work. Mm -hmm. Black, black outer. I mean, maybe they'll come out with a skate shoe. That's not a bad idea. They definitely have money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, Start a new category. All but right. here's the thing, though. It's like, <laughs> this is like, yeah, because we are talking we were talking about before is like this is you're holding that person back from earning a living livelihood all that stuff so right. how do you even go about approaching something like that knowing that that person can either get that or not get that because you're kind of the the the, the mediator for this deal to go through you um, know what i'm saying yeah it's a little more organic than that mm. cuz typically brands will decide whether skateboarding is a space that they want to invest okay. in but well, what if they were already in the in the space then like, they would know who, who they want who they yeah, want yeah. but mm -hmm. say they want somebody now is there still pressure on you for trying to get the the best deal for them because like yeah, I said, this is, it, it's an interesting question because I think there's a lot of misconception about like the value of an individual. Mm. And I always say this, and I'm sorry if I'm redundant for people who've heard my story before, but like market value of an athlete or a skater is only determined by how much someone is willing to pay for them. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. right, right. And so I only have leverage if I have multiple brands or an athlete that is just like this only matters how much they're going to pay me. Okay. Otherwise I'll walk away. Oh, right. Oh yeah. So I either have to have one of those kind of dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, a, if a brand comes and says, Hey, look, we want a skater. Here's our budget. I can go, okay, well, here's who's free agents in the space. Um, but it's a much longer process than that because ultimately, as you know, skaters aren't just going to go ride for UGG. It, like you, you have to get us in a room and be like, okay, here's our whole strategy. Sure, and sure, sure. you have a seat at the table for how we're going to market. And we know we're kind of an Australian sheepwear brand. Right, but right. we really want, we, we really value and want to make meaningful investment in the space. And then it's like, oh, okay, easy, right? But I'm sure some of those companies do come around. That, yeah. that want to get into skateboarding and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work yeah you know there's plenty of examples yeah. yes yeah, i guess it just depends on what brand we're talking about yeah. well yeah. that's true that's true yeah but what uh, about like yeah like the the drink sponsors coming in so how is that working with like red bull coming in was were you working getting oh, those yeah. all deals well, down? i've done them all <laughs> <laughs> was that because at one point it was very very uncool to have a drink sponsor like Monster or Red Bull back then was like, yo, it's almost. Let me tell you, <laughs> you want to talk about maximizing your opportunity. Like as an athlete, if you care more about what people think about you than what a particular brand might be willing to pay to give you resources, build meaningful wealth, mm -hmm. buy your first home or your apartment or whatever. And I think that's where you know, it gets a little bit sticky for skaters sometimes because, you know, they really want to be respected by the core and everyone's so particular and has opinions and and whatever. Um, but if you really want to be able to walk away from a skate career, then you need to approach it like a business. And if there's a drink partner, and I will tell you that those brands pay the lion's share. Mm -hmm. uh, they have built they have helped athletes build legacy wealth and yeah. own a home or have access to resources and opportunity that they never would have had. Right. And so people can say whatever they want about, you know, a brand in particular, but I come from um, kind of the, the perspective of if it is an opportunity for the individual, which is who I ultimately represent, then it has to be their decision. And I certainly don't want them to take money from a brand that they can't get behind because mm -hmm. that never works. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. It's, it's not, I don't want to do deals like that. Right. 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 But so, I will say that, you know, Red Bull and Monster and, you know, all of them, Mountain Dew mm -hmm. have really created 
massive global opportunities for the athletes that they work with. And a lot of them have made meaningful investments and, and for a very long time. Yeah. And I think that that is, is really important. And even if I don't drink it or don't like it or think it's unhealthy or whatever, at the end of the day, my responsibility is to the individual and making sure that we're taking advantage of every opportunity that is presented to them. Yeah. And I certainly do not judge them when they decide to take rock star dollars. Or, sure, you sure. You know what I mean? Because I think it's important too, because, um, I mean, we do talk about it on the show a lot, but, um, you know, it's a hard business skateboarding, you know, and there's a lot of people out there, a lot of professional skateboarders who work a job and try to skate and try to travel. And so it's a brutal industry and it, it just makes me, you know, kind of uh, disappointed and kind of mad or, you know, just all of the above emotions when I hear people like, oh, fuck that, this person, da, da, I'm like, this person's being able to like live and feed his family. And like you said, like have this, like buy their first home or the skateboarding thing isn't going to last forever. There's going to be new kids coming up. There's going to be, unless you're one of those guys that's like a legend in the industry, like, you know, like a Lance Mountain who's on Nike mm -hmm. and th these people, Mark mm -hmm. Gonzalez mm -hmm. and you're, it's going to be short lived. So are you just going to sit there and kind of do nothing? Or are you going to try to like, you know, be happy for somebody that yeah. they I can mean, get there? I, I think there's something about skateboarding. You know, there's a lot of haters, right? Yeah, oh, it's part, it's like a cultural thing. For sure. and, and it's okay, right? Mm -hmm. Like, everyone has an opinion. It's so nuanced, right? right. Mm -hmm. It's like, but I think, don't you think generationally that's changing a little Big bit? Time. It is, yeah. Yeah. I for think sure. it's gotten a lot better, to be honest. I yeah. don't think there's as many haters. It's, there's a lot more community mm. amongst every type of skateboarder now. Right. So I love to see that. Me yeah. too. Obviously, there was, there was definitely a lot of device separation from certain type of cliques back in the day in the early 90s. That was definitely like that. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, which yeah. we all grew up in. We were like yeah. The, yeah. our little gangs, yeah. right? Yeah, and like, sure. oh, we don't like them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in hindsight, <laughs> I was like, it's, it did such a disservice for us because at the end of the day, we're all trying to do the same thing and have fun, you know what I mean, and produce what we can produce. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, I will say, despite all that and even my own um, challenges with it, it is a beautiful community and oh, culture. Yeah. And I really appreciate that we're having this cultural moment where – we're taking a look at some of the toxicities in right, whatever sure. part of our lives that has been uh, a, a consistent and we're breaking that stuff down a little bit. I, th I think it's important just, sure. just of the world we're living in right now with social media and apps and different things. Mm -hmm. And it's important, you know, back when we were growing up in that, you know, talk shit era. Yeah. But we're also getting older now too, totally. so we also respect what's sure. going on. I and still everything. talk a little shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on, yeah, I mean, yeah, let's yeah. talk some shit for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. But healthy. you're not going on people's posts. <laughs> no, and, like, no, I'm, shit, all, I'm all about you know? positivity on other people's po other people's posts. Oh, There's yeah. no reason yeah. I should be saying anything negative on anybody's post. Otherwise, I just don't need to say anything. Exactly. <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. You know, you know what OPP? Oh man, other people's posts. But other people's posts. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I think I mean, I love even having this conversation yeah. with you today. You know, we've had, you know, like Ryan Clements on the show. And I think it's important for people, you know, who aren't in the skateboard industry, who are like fans in our community to understand how all this works, you yeah. know, and like what what are the inner workings on how a person like yourself like navigates and their clients and stuff like that. And these companies that try to come in the industry and they're the real interlopers mm, you know what i but mean we'll take their money it's see depending on what yeah what we're they're representing for sure yeah yeah but it's i like, mean like as for long instance, as it's going in someone's hands yeah. that we like then totally. we were just all day long right? exactly and we were just recently talking about like paul's p uh paul rodriguez's like target deal oh yeah and, I'm sure you were a part of that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's you know. Amazing, yeah. I know some people have come on here and taken a little credit for my work. Oh. oh. <laughs> Wait, um, Because that was early. That was like fucking, that was a long time ago. Yeah. And that was like, yeah. on, you yeah. know, and to like, us, that was like, dude, this dude, they target? target? Like, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, I mean, the great thing about Paul is like, he was the perfect transcendent star f who... You know, there was all the drama around him going to Nike and it was like his whole attitude always was like, why would I not ride for Nike? Like, I like Nike. I buy Nikes. Right. Like, yeah. that is like, you know, the the ultimate. And, you know, he came with that attitude and really 
um, I think was was partially responsible for SB success. We, like, yeah, we, we just definitely. were talking about this other night because sure. they already had like Reese Forbes, Danny Supa. They already yeah, had... that weird eclectic team. Remember yeah. that weird mm-hmm. movie they did? Oh, my know, God. Danny yeah. and... Yeah. yeah, I was like, what is this? But then Paul came along. Was Cairo Foster on that? I don't think he was no. on there. No. Who was it? The band uh, wrote for him back in the day. Bam. Yeah, that was a long they? time ago. Bam, way, he was way the first. Well, there was, was before the SB program. Before yeah. the SB. Well, they, remember there was Sovereign or whatever. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then, I mean, they had tried a few times. Xavier. Xavier. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, they tried yeah. a few times. It didn't work. It did. But when no. they got when they got P-Rod involved, I think that's where it, it did. Yeah. It definitely yeah. totally changed. He was the poster boy at that moment. It was like the right moment. You for sure. It was the right moment. And he... Like just had the right, uh, it was like a perfect storm of someone who like really looked up to Tiger or was very open about, you know, even, you know, practicing or, right. you know, like right. taking a more kind of athlete mindset approach mm-hmm. to the game right. and really leaning into competition in a way that, you know, most of those other eclectic athletes didn't right. or sure. skaters I, I mean, I, I call them athletes because it's easier, but yeah, it is yeah. a dis- important distinction. It's for sure. Was it a, was it a difficult, how, how did that whole, I mean, I don't know how much you could go into it, but how did that whole Nike thing <laughs> transpire? <laughs> Tell us okay, the details. Talk yeah. some shit. No, no, no. Is now the time when yeah, we talk shit? let's hear it. No, I'm just saying <laughs> because like, <laughs> here, here, here's Nike, you know, trying to make another push into skateboarding and Paul is like, wants to do it. Yeah. So is there like, you just call them up and be like, yo, Phil Knight, what's up? Uh, oh man, like what? Or no, how, they, how does this they, work? They reached out to us. Okay. Yeah, and he was at, at Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, or was at S. 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 Sorry, yeah. Soltec. Yeah. He was at S. Mm-hmm. So many brands. Uh, <laughs> Soltec, love them. Yep. Still, still core brand. I give mm-hmm. them so much credit. Pierre is amazing. Um, but yeah, I think... Uh, People were real mad. Mm. People were really fucking mad. Right. And it was interesting because having been a snowboarder and I watched their <clears throat> failed efforts to enter snowboarding and then their successful efforts and then their withdrawal, you know, Nike, they do whatever they want. Yeah. And in this particular instance, it was a perfect storm in that Paul was ready and he was the right age. It was the right moment. And he really got involved. You know, he had a real seat at the table. They really listened to what he had to say. And even at that young age, you know, had pretty strong opinions. Mm -hmm. And I think they really listened to him. And they also, like, put him with Tiger and... You know, Those Kobe. Big athletes, right? Yeah, he has his own parking space, isn't? Doesn't he? Yeah. 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 At Nike, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get that that in the deal too? I didn't. They just threw that <laughs> in. Just threw that in. <laughs> that was so parking. Little cherry on top. I mean, hopefully he'll get his own building one day. There you I go. mean, who cares about the parking spot? Yeah. 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 <laughs> he needs a production line like Janowski. Yeah, yeah I think so a, a lot of people in skateboarding were really mad, and like I was probably a perfect uh, target for the anger. Not to cut you off, those people that were mad are now working for them. I know. <laughs> <laughs> are we saying names? Yeah, yeah. I will say yeah, names. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the funny part, right? Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's the funny part. It all comes around and whatever. I'll take a punch for Paul any day. For sure. Yeah, Paul. I mean, that that that's early on for sure. Yeah. I think Sam Smythe and I actually got into a physical altercation. Really? At some point, yeah. Mm, I don't remember that. Tampa. Then, yeah, you know mm. what? I do remember yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. It was nasty. Wow. Yeah. He I'm made very... me cry. Mm. Yeah, I'm and sure. That, he, I'm sure he re, re, he regrets. Uh, he that. never apologized. So oh, Sam. Okay. Uh oh, Sam. Yeah. Better get that. He called me a. I think a vulture. Like he really came at me pretty hard. Mm. He was real mad at me, and I think a lot of it had to do with that. Right. Yeah. Right. With the Paul situation. What, yeah. Yeah, right, and right. Paul left girl yeah. and all that. Yeah, so. but Paul left girl on his own accord. It wasn't absolutely. Anything. Yeah, one hundred percent. I had nothing to do with that. That right. was his own decision. And I mean, it sucks. It was the right decision. I mean, yeah. he's killing it with primitive. He he's yeah. doing his thing. So. Yeah. 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 That's exactly. what he wanted to do. Yeah, it's like for sure. That's right. And Paul yeah. like is a smart, astute, 
amazing human being. Yeah. Like I, I feel yeah. so completely honored. Like I love him, legitimately mm -hmm. love him as a person and feel so lucky to have worked with him for as long as I did. Uh, Where is that like button right? Is it right here or right here? Just a little scroll um, coming down the bottom. It's, it's Subscribe. over to, yeah, it's on your it's on my left. Right? No, on your left. Hey, yeah, hit right that there. button right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah, <laughs> the, the like button's kind of like in the, in the right middle there. there. It's like we're kind of like Oh, it's there. like right here? Kind of. Like yeah, right there? Yeah, the subscribe's like over to the left. <laughs> it's like right over there. <laughs> All right.